today I'm your roving correspondent, Kyle Broderick, also known as The Social Regressive. And if you're wondering why we had a two week blackout on videos, it's because of this. I'm on vacation. I went to Stonewall, Colorado, and oh my gosh, are we having a good time. This is my kind of country. It is just gorgeous out here. I love the air. I love that there aren't a lot of allergens. As you, many of you know, I'm, I'm an Okie, and so we have every allergen on the planet, especially out there on the eastern side, and it's just, oh my gosh, it's nice here. Now, I did bring hot weather with me. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of throw that out up front. It's been getting up into the 90s by about four o'clock or so. Right now, we have some good shade, so I don't know, we might be getting some rain and a little cooler weather. I've been watching the forecast because tomorrow I plan to go up uh, to Trinchera Peak right out here. So I'm gonna be over in the, San, the Pike San Isabel National Forest. And it's just kind of a wild area. There is one trail that runs through it that'll take me to the top of Trinchera Peak, and I'm not taking it. I'm gonna do something that's a lot more fun. I have scoped out the maps, uh, I've done my analysis, and I've kind of figured out uh, an alternate route. I'm gonna go where there is no trail, no path. Watch for that video because it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. But I wanted to show you all the stuff that I'm gonna be bringing with me and not bringing with me. A lot of this is day hike sort of equipment that I tend to bring uh, when I go out on these things. And I'm gonna be leaving a gob of this behind, but I'm picking specific little things that I'm gonna take up there with me. I wanna go as light as possible. I'm gonna take as little as possible and uh, that just makes everything much more enjoyable, especially for this Oki who's used to 1,000 feet of elevation and I'm gonna be sucking wind when I get up there to about 13,500. Uh, it's it's gonna be a little difficult for me, but uh, hopefully this stuff will help. Let me show you what I'm working with here. All right. Now, a lot of this stuff, these are things that I would normally take on a day hike. I would kind of mix and match certain things based on what I'm doing. So I'm gonna show you what we're weeding out here. Now, first off, we're gonna go through some of the tools. Uh, as far as defense goes, because that one is quite important to me, you know that I'm a, you know, a gun reviewer and I do all kinds of gun stuff. Uh, the pistol that I'm gonna be bringing is my usual pocket pistol, Taurus Millennium PT-111 Pro, nine millimeter. Love this thing and I'm bringing an extra mag. So I know that this is not enough for bear. I'd, I'd prefer a 44 Magnum or a 10 millimeter, but, uh, Hey, this is what I've got, and at least I have 24 rounds of it. I got hollow points in there, full metal jackets in here. As for some other tools that can kind of mix in, uh, into that, uh, I am not gonna be bringing my awesome Ontario Rat 1. Uh, I'm just gonna be kind of paring things down, reducing some weight, so let's get that out of there. This actually weighs probably slightly less, even though it is a fixed bladed knife. I could be wrong about that, but uh, this Mora, this is the, uh, the Army version. It has a beautiful patina on it. Uh, no, that's not your normal rust. That is from cutting onions. And this is in grand shape. Very, very comfy. If I have to do any bushcraft, you know, if I get stuck up there and have to do some stuff, uh, this one's gonna be uh, really, really good for uh, all kinds of cutting, for cross cutting. I can uh, do all sorts of fun stuff with this. Actually, the, uh, the Ontario is really good for a lot of that too. I've been doing a lot of uh, splitting with this uh, for some of the campfires that we had. Great knife, but this is the one that I'm choosing right here. All right, uh, for other camp craft, this is my saw viver, one of my, uh, the tools that I'm most proud to have. I'm very, very happy to be one of those that managed to get the, uh, the Trailblazer saw viver before that company went out of business. This is the ultimate little uh, camp saw. It weighs so very little. It's aluminum. Uh, just large enough for you know a decent sized log for campfires and uh, I will not be bringing that even though it is so wonderfully lightweight. As far as light goes I have a couple different options here usually I take a backup I'll take two uh, you know so these are the two that I usually take with me the black diamond spot and the uh, this is the Olight i5T EOS this is a single double A right here and uh, this can pump out 300 lumens this one's only 75 lumens but this one's heavier i'm leaving it out this one's going to be coming along with me my one source of light and like i said usually i have duplicates but i'm really intending that uh, this is just going to be you know a day hike i get up to the top mess around for a little while go to the, some of the high peaks kind of traverse between them and then come back 
Now, this one is gonna be a little bulky, but it's also very lightweight, so I have no problem with this. This is a Fiskars, uh, just a little gardening trowel, and that is if I have to take a giant dump on top of a majestic mountain, uh, because, well, out in bear country, you, you definitely wanna bury that up. It's just nice all around. For, uh, for shelter, I was really hoping that I'd have enough room to bring a hammock. So this is my five-star gear hammock. Love this thing, really, really comfortable. And you know, if I could just take a nap up there, up at the heights, kind of come down a little bit into the trees and uh, take a nap up there, that would be stellar. But it's, even though it is very lightweight and made of polyester, uh, this is still just a bit too bulky too heavy, we're gonna put that aside. And this is all I'm bringing, an emergency bivy. This is one of the better ones that I've found, the Soul. This one, it sounds like it's gonna be a lot tougher than some of the uh, pure Chinese uh, knockoffs of this. This should be able to uh, take a bit of a beating. It has the internal reflecting material, so it's gonna keep me pretty warm in, a, in an emergency situation. Like I say, it's in the 90s down here. We don't know what it's gonna be like up there or if the weather's gonna change very quickly. Eh, just in case, I'm gonna have that along. Oh, and I should point out this little bag right here is for the trowel. I don't want getting you know dirt getting all over my stuff. Other tools, we have a butane lighter. This is one of the jet type, and I've been using this for the first time here recently uh, on, the, on a camp out with my kids. This is fantastic. My little boy can light up a fire really easily with this. I'm sick of all these little windproof matches and other uh, finicky little things. Although I'm beginning to find out here in Colorado, it doesn't matter. If I think about fire hard enough, the entire forest is gonna burst into flames. Everything is so dry and easy to burn out here. I'm gonna make a whole video making fun of Colorado people about that. Uh, this is the butane that goes in it. I will not be bringing this. I've charged this puppy all up. And by the way, everything that I mentioned in this video, if it's available for a purchase somewhere, uh, even if it's not, I'm gonna put it in the description down below so you can see a list of all the stuff. Um, and some of these that I'm throwing out here on the side just because they're too heavy or too bulky, I'm gonna list those too because they're great for other kinds of day hikes. This torch is by Zookura or Zookura. Uh, I don't know exactly who came up with this. It's probably a pharmaceutical company or it's Chinese. It's probably very Chinese. Uh, I don't think this is actually anodized here on the outside. I think there might be like a plastic film. But aside from that, it all seems to be pretty decent aluminum. Uh, it's not really super duper heavy. Um, it's, it's actually pretty large and beefy in the hand, and I think it can hold quite a bit of butane. Uh, so this is gonna go with me on a lot of treks in the future. My bloodline is Irish, Dutch, and German, so I will be bringing sunscreen. I do better than some people, but uh, no, I, I'm definitely gonna burn up there if it's anything like today. So I've got some good 50 SPF. For everything that can possibly leak out here, I'm gonna have a waterproof bag. It's just, you know, a quart zipper bag. If it's one of those freezer kind, they hardly ever bust open and they're not gonna leak everywhere. Food, I've got a trail mix. That's a blend of the tropical trail mix, which is always really cheap and I don't get that. I love this stuff. And then it has some, uh, some granola in there and uh, some mixed nuts. Really inexpensive, but a whole lot of calories there and it doesn't weigh a whole ton. But if you're looking for density, these are the things to check out. I was uh, trying to figure out how to balance budget, um, calorie density, and you know the, the weight overall, and these Lara bars look great. The banana bread ones have a lot of potassium and magnesium, and that's the sort of stuff that I'm gonna need to make sure that I don't lock up my, uh, my poor office worker limbs while I'm up there. And then for a little protein, I might throw these in. Uh, these will definitely get me a longer burn than some of the other stuff we have here. Uh, these are a little heavy though. I might leave these in the car. On to more important items. Right back here, this is a first aid kit that my wife put together for me as an RN. Uh, together we worked on this to figure out what sort of needs I might have in the backwoods, out hunting, and this is the result. Sometime we might delve into this. If you guys wanna see a full review of what's inside this first aid kit, let me know and uh, we'll do a video on that. This could be kind of fun. It is jam packed with all kinds of stuff and I'm really curious to see uh, if this kind of aligns with what you guys have, what other, uh, 
first aid kits you've seen out there, but uh, this has all the stuff that I've ever needed and it is too heavy. So for this trip, I'm gonna pare things back quite a bit. And uh, this is everything that I'm gonna take inside this bag. I just have a handful of Band-Aids. I have some uh, sterile wipes. I have some antibiotic ointment. I have a, an ankle uh, brace right here, just in case I turn my ankle. Chapstick, athletic tape, that's gonna help if I get a blister somewhere. And aside from that, uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, toilet paper, that's a good one. Earplugs. So this is my little uh, everyday kit, all kinds of little things that I might need. Much simplified compared to what I usually take out there, but I think that's gonna be plenty for me. For other things that are gonna help me out in the, uh, the great outdoors, this stuff is the best ever. If you live in Oklahoma or Texas, you need this. DEET is great, that, uh, that off woods or you know deep woods stuff, but it's also gonna melt all your gear. And so I've been kind of reticent to use that a lot of the time because it's gonna trash everything that I own. So this is what I use now, Repel Tick Defense. This uses picaridin, I think it's called. It's a synthetic uh, pepper. And this uh, it get, keeps all the ticks and all the oak mites and all that nasty stuff off. Uh, I'm really not gonna need it here because there's just about nothing out in these great outdoors. I've been bitten by just about nothing, a couple of really lazy mosquitoes. Um, but I think I'll go ahead and hit myself with this before I go up. Also, before I go up, I'm gonna spray myself down with magnesium oil. Uh, this is a spray that I can put on my legs and it's gonna help keep me from seizing up out there. This should keep the cramps away. For one of the most important matters, I'm gonna be taking up a little extra space and a little bit more weight. This is my kind of mess that I created for filtering water and it works out beautifully. This is a Sawyer. This is the full size filter right here. Uh, there is the mini if you want one that's a, a lot lighter and smaller to carry around. I like this one. This one is gonna last a whole lot longer and really it doesn't weigh much at all. Some of the other parts that I've included with this are the ones that add significantly more weight. This is a Katadin Hiker Pro that normally has a filter in here, but I've gotten sick of the, uh, the Katadin Hiker Pro because those filters last hardly ever. Even if I were filtering distilled water, this thing would crap out uh, before the, uh, the maximum amount of water that they recommend, you know, that, that each one of these uh, filters will last. And the filters cost about 45 bucks a piece in here. So yeah, I've gotten sick of using this for that, but now I use it as a pump. Uh, and this is great for pumping water out of the stream using these hoses up into here, squirt them into this and put it into my bottle. And it's just a, a very quick way to get water. I hate having to stop for a long time to filter water. And that's why I didn't bring the Sawyer bags. Those bags are really annoying to fill, even though they're very lightweight and small. And in this case, to me, it's worth it to bring this extra stuff. In order to share my adventure with you, I'm going to be bringing not the big camera that I'm filming on right here. This is my uh, Canon SL1. Great camera, wonderful lenses, but uh, I'm gonna be kind of cheaping out on this so that I can uh, save myself some weight. I'm gonna be bringing a GoPro up the mountain. This is a GoPro Hero, and uh, I've got some spare batteries, and I'm just gonna bring a couple little accessories like a tiny tripod so that I can get some of the shots up there. Uh, and then for the rest of it, I'm gonna be recording the audio on this little microphone that you see right here going to a tiny audio recorder. I just picked this up and it records WAV files. So it's just gonna be lighter overall and a lot more flexible. And this can get just dumped on with rain and it's gonna be fine. It's totally waterproof. I've taken this underwater, great stuff. Now to carry everything, this is really the centerpiece of this review. This is the Camelback Rim Runner 22. And this is the best day pack that I have ever encountered, could ever ask for. They have thought of absolutely everything. I think I'm gonna do a full review on this bag just so you can see all the little bits, but I wanna point out some stuff just because this is so stinking cool. First off, it is extremely lightweight. They have spared all kinds of, you know, the usual little plastic parts are just not there. Uh, the fabric on the outside here, it's a ripstop uh, nylon, it seems, and it seems to be very tough. 
but it's not like your 1000 Cordura, 500 Cordura, and you're saving a lot of weight with that. Also, the foams that they use in here between the, the different compartments to help protect your gear, uh, they do the job, but they seem to be made of a much lighter material than usual. So overall, this bag is just stinking lightweight. And as you can see on the back here, uh, we have a lot of mesh so that it's gonna help to wick away a lot of moisture. And these, uh, these, uh, these shoulder straps, you can see they're not as thick as you're gonna get on like a backpacker's backpack, but it does still have plenty of cush for this kind of work. If you wanna be able to maintain lightweight and for it to hug your body really well, this is the backpack. This is the best thing I've ever used. Just love it. Uh, you can see that it's already, uh, when you buy this, it actually comes with a hydration bladder. So this has a two and a half liter a bladder that is completely devoid of any taste. You're just gonna have your water flavor and that's it. The hose is the same. A lot of time the, you know, the bladder is fine, but the hose has a funky taste. Everything here is designed for optimal flavor. And uh, these things seem to be really tough. I have not sprung a leak in a Camelback yet. I use their uh, three liter Omega reservoirs as well. And those things are just bomb proof. And uh, uh, yeah, they, they taste really good as well. As you can see, in, in uh, you know, part of the weight reduction, they don't have one of their more extremely complicated uh, connectors here. Sometimes you can get these quick connect, um, uh, little spigots and valves and things, and this does not have that. If I need to fill this up at a creek, I'm going to probably just be opening up uh, the bag itself and then filling it uh, from the, uh, the Sawyer. And I can have a hose that runs right into there and fill it up really quickly that way. This is the main compartment. It is actually quite roomy. I've used this as a carry-on bag. I have used this as a day pack with the kids. You know, when we're just going out up into the woods goofing off, or if we're going to the zoo, I can fit a lunch, I can fit a picnic blanket, I can fit extra clothes and all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, I'll put some, uh, some dimensions on here, including the weight so you can see uh, exactly how heavy and uh, what sort of stuff you can carry. We have a little kind of admin compartment right here. This is where you can put your valuables, uh, like you do get a little uh, clip here if you want to attach your keys. And that can nestle down inside one of these little mesh pockets. Um, so you can have stuff out here in the open, you can have it in these two mesh pockets. Again, everything's very light. And then right here we have uh, this little section. You could put an extra hydration bladder, you could put little you know, cups. Uh, what I like to do is put things that need to dry off. I put them inside here because we do have mesh on either side. So if I have a wet t-shirt or some wet pants, if I'm not hanging them off the straps or off these, uh, these wonderful little loops right here in the webbing, and they're going inside here. Uh, and it's a great way to very quickly get access to something that you're gonna need at, at a moment's notice. Moving around to the side, I have two of these mesh uh, pouches right here, which are also great for drying materials. Uh, for example, I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead and show you this. This is my camp towel. This is a Coleman camp towel that I think I have cut in half and I have put into a little mesh bag. This goes with me everywhere on hunts and on hikes. Uh, this is extremely useful for drying off messy children. And uh, if I need to dry this off, I can either hang it, like I said, or I can stuff it into one of these side pouches with mesh and everything dries off quickly through there. The mesh is, has some elastic or some kind of special weave that allows it to stretch. So it, it tends to sit very closely up on the side of the bag, um, but it does stretch out to very neatly hold a Nalgene bottle. This is, for me, the, the one tool that tells me if a bag is serious or not. I have seen all kinds of crappy little day bags uh, that, you know, they're probably just designed for school use or, you know, maybe it used to be a good outfitter company and they've fallen down in recent times and they've, uh, they've kind of goofed everything up and it's, it's more of an urban backpack. This is a true outdoorsman's backpack because it, each one of these on the side will neatly swallow a Nalgene bottle and it's deep enough, even though it doesn't look like it, each of these pouches will get this little elastic strap at the top right up around the neck of the bottle. These guys at Camelback know their business and they made this bag on purpose. This is an outdoorsman's backpack. 
at the bottom, you can see that the material is a little bit heavier and thicker than it is up here. This is that ripstop, but over here, this is more like a 500 Cordura. And uh, this, I've taken this out for about two years now. And that's the amount of wear that you can see right there. Just some little scuffs. And uh, that's really about it. A little bit of dirt here on the side. So yeah, there's the, the second Nalgene container uh, area right there. Coming around to the front, we have the sternum strap that connects right up here. And we have a special clip for the, uh, the hydration hose. And so usually I'll just kind of run this up inside here. This has a little bit of spring to it. So that's gonna uh, take up, it's gonna be a little suspension system if you're kind of bouncing over rocks. Uh, so it isn't just compressing your chest all the time. But then down here we have the belt. And uh, this has two pouches that are great for snacks or little uh, common reach items. I like to keep sunglasses in here, uh, sunblock, chapstick, whatever kind of stuff I'm gonna need at a moment's notice. Oh, there you can see a couple little scuffs. Again, that's two years of use on airplanes as a carry-on bag, going out to zoos and parks. This bag is awesome. Okay, there is one bit of damage. Let me show you this. I just need to sew this up, but uh, you can probably see some of the stitching starting to pull loose right up there. I just need to do a little hand stitching or maybe pop it on a sewing machine, but uh, need to fix that up. It's where this strap attaches up here at the top. There is only one drawback to this bag and I'm gonna show it to you right here. Here is the hydration bladder. And as you can see, it's laying down there, down at the very bottom. This has no hanger because the, uh, the hydration bladder that comes with it, it does have the hangers. It wants to grab onto something. And I like to have this hanging all the way up. I like to have a little hook inside here. This did not come with it. However, if you take this little uh, strap at the top, push it through the hydration bladder hole, this can be used to hang the, uh, the hydration bladder. It's the only one thing they left out on this entire backpack. Other than that, it is 100% A plus perfect. I love this. And I'm gonna be so happy to take this up to the top of that mountain. This is gonna help me get there. It fits really snugly to the body and I can run with this, I can jog with it, I can do whatever I want. This is much more comfortable than you can imagine. Now for clothing, and we're gonna start with the most important part, feet. I was really torn. I did not know which pair of shoes to take up there. These are my redhead hiking boots that I've had forever. They are wonderfully comfortable. Uh, these are great for long backpacking trips and they can handle quite a bit of weight on my back. Uh, there's just a lot of squish going on down there in that sole. Waterproof. However, these have some insulation in them and considering how warm it's been around here, yeah, I'm definitely moving in this direction. These true spec side zip boots are wonderful. I've talked about these in a previous video, I actually compared the two and why I use the two in different situations. But if these are gonna be the ones I'm gonna take up tomorrow. Uh, the grip on the bottom is great. Even on this kind of slippery scree stuff that we have out here, uh, you know, a lot of the kind of rock fall, uh, there's a lot of sand out here. And this, uh, this grip down here does a really good job of grabbing onto whatever it can. Um, yeah, lace it up once, side zip, and it's pretty darn comfy inside. It's a little bit more roomy than what I usually like, but after my tests over the past couple days, uh, these are gonna pass with flying colors as long as I use the right socks. So what we have here, I am a big snob about socks. I like to take care of my feet. And these two uh, are some of my favorites. These are the brand new ones that my wife just bought me for Father's Day. These are called Darn Tough. Again, I'll put links in the description below. These socks are really, really good. They have a good bit of, of squish, a good bit of cush through here. It's a very soft material on the inside. I think this is some kind of smart wool blend. Uh, it's tight around the, uh, the instep sort of area, uh, right in the middle of the foot. So it's going to give you a lot of support right in the middle. And then you get extra cushioning under the foot in uh, the heel and the toe area up here. Uh, just love these. These are brand new to my collection. And thank you, honey. <laughs> love the socks. But she also bought me these a while back. These are a merino wool blend. And these were my favorite until these came along. Uh, these are gonna be, this is gonna be my backup pair. I always bring extra socks when I'm out on one of these. Um, yeah, very, these are thicker, 
very, very soft on the inside. And again, it has that grip right across the middle and then extra padding under the heel and the toe. Uh, so my feet are going to be really happy after this. Other footwear. I haven't decided if I want to bring my Crocs or not. These are special Crocs right here. Uh, these, I know that you're used to the, you know, the really ugly shape with the broad toe, but uh, these are special ones. They have a, a very thin, well, actually it's a little bit on the thick side, but it has a kind of a mesh material that's softer on the inside, and these do not hold water. They weigh just about nothing. Water just drips right off of them, uh, runs right off, and so I'm not carrying extra weight if I have to cross a creek. Uh, I don't like to keep my boots on if I'm going through a, a deep creek. These go on and they slap onto the, my, my backpack and they add just about no weight. However, just about doesn't mean none, so I might leave these. We're going to see tomorrow. Uh, you'll check that out in the next video uh, to see if I actually brought these. I'm not anticipating any creek crossings. That's part of the deal tomorrow. I'm just going to be going straight up a spur up to the top of the mountain. And uh, so I might just leave those behind. As for what I'll be wearing out there, now let's get rid of the sock there. I'm gonna be wearing my true spec, not shorts. You can see that these are shorts. No, these are zip off pants. And these are my favorite coveted pants that I have had. I have two pairs of these and these rock. Uh, you know that I love true spec pants if you've seen the channel for a while. I've reviewed a handful of them. I love some of their hunting style, some of the more tactical style. Uh, these are pretty good for, you know, there's all kinds of daily use. They, they have the usual pockets. These are 24 sevens and these have zip off legs. I really wish that they would make this all over again because these pants are uh, just my absolute favorites. Uh, there we go, let's get into underwear. Got some starter Walmart uh, brand stuff right here. I think this is Walmart, uh, but these are uh, just kind of polyester stretch and uh, these I usually wear these to keep the uh, the ticks off the nethers um, But these are also really good for just drying very quickly the pants dry quickly those dry quickly and If things get cold, which I'm kind of hoping they'll chill out a little bit I do have guide gear base layers from sportsman's guide. Uh, this is the long sleeve top this is the long bottom, and uh, I've been using these for years in Oklahoma winters at least. And uh, yeah, they, they pass with flying colors. They, they really do remove moisture. They keep everything very warm. And I like to wear them under stuff like the shirt that I'm gonna be wearing right here. True Spec Ecotech. This is the greatest uh, outdoor shirt that I have ever owned. It, it breathes in all the right places. It has vents that go all the way down the under of the arm, all the way down the side. So this breathes really well. Wicks moisture away. It's very tall, so I can tuck this into my pants and I don't get my backpack pinching on me. And as you can see, it's a wonderful shiny color. Uh, favorite shirt of all time. If things do get really cold, I'm gonna have a fleece stuffed in the bottom of my pack. Very lightweight but uh, it is gonna take up quite a bit of space. I'm gonna put this down there to help get the weight higher up in the pack where it's supposed to be anyway. Last bits. I do have some gloves. These are also lightweight. I'll put links to these. Uh, these are just those kind of soft shell things. They have trigger fingers that can be opened up so you can take a shot with a gun. They also have this rubberized grip material through here. And as you can see, they are beautifully camouflaged so that no one will find me. I mean, uh, everything will be fine. Um, here is my balaclava, which I think I may leave behind. I'm really not expecting it to get anywhere uh, near that cold to be needing that. But this is the one that always comes with me, my boonie hat, so that I can look really bizarre up on the top of a mountain. But that's okay because this feels really good. Finally, a mesh bag for the extra clothing. If I need to dry something out, I can hang that off the bag as well. And of course, sunglasses. These are Radian's polarized sunglasses. I'll put links to these below. These are my very favorites. They are safety glasses. These are in all of my shooting videos. And these help me to see much better when there's a high glare. I expect there'll be a lot of sun tomorrow. And so these are gonna be a must. That looks pretty reasonable. And this feels pretty reasonable too. That's not bad. That's not going to feel like too much. And I should point out here that uh, I'm not actually going to be bringing this Nalgene bottle full of water. 
I'm gonna dump this out first. It's just nice to have a reliable water container, one that's really gonna take a beating. Uh, the, I've never had a hydration bladder go bad on me. I've only had Camelback, never had one spring a leak. But of all the things that I have, that's the one that's probably the most prone to failure just because you know it's, it's kind of a squishy bladder. Uh, this one is very tough, so I'm gonna keep this empty here on the side of the pack. Well, thanks so much for watching, you guys. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and especially hit that notification bell down below so you don't miss when the next video comes out in the series. That's gonna be the one where we actually go to the top of the peak. I cannot wait to see what the view is like from the top. I've, you know, I've done some kind of tall climbs before, but this one is probably a good 4,000 feet higher than the, uh, the highest one that I've done so far. Uh, so this is just gonna be a real blast for me, and I hope you guys enjoy it too. Thank you to everybody that has made these videos possible. Thank you to Sportsman's Guide and Stan and Mary at the 338 Lapua Magnum level out on Patreon. And then we have our 300 Win Mag level uh, patrons. We have Joseph Davis, we have Peter, Howard, and Mr. No Name. And we have just a whole gob of other folks pitching in a buck or two a month to help keep videos like these coming. I'll see you guys at the top tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.